All righty, y'all. So thank you all so much for being here. My name is Jonathan Gonzalez Montelongo. I use he, him pronouns, and I am your, your visitor services and events coordinator in our campus tours and visitor center. Um, we're part of our orientation and transition programs team. So really helping you and, and the whole point of our Coyotes Connect programming, help you transition into college as you start making those decisions and, and getting hopefully those admissions letters, right? Um, but today our session is going to focus on one of our colleges, uh, which is the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. And um, just some housekeeping, if you all can keep your mics uh, muted for the duration of the program, unless you're asking a question, I ask that you use the reaction um, button to raise your hand um, and use that feature to either raise your hand and then we'll unmute. Um, I would also say that probably our presenters would appreciate if you turn on your cameras so you could see some future coyotes. Um, and then if not, then obviously feel free to keep them um, hidden. But other than that, um, also use the chat to ask any questions and I'll turn it over to my colleagues in the Jack H. Brown College. Take it away. Thank you, Jonathan. Everyone, and welcome to the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration session. My name is Claire Luevenos. I'm an academic advisor with the Student Success Center. I'm here today with another advisor from the college, Kim. Hello, everyone. My name is Kim Arredondo. I'm also an academic advisor for the Student Success Center and the Jack H. Brown College. Perfect. Today, we hope to provide some helpful information for our new students and prospective students as they are thinking about joining Cal State San Bernardino and joining the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. Uh, during this session, please feel free to utilize the chat function to ask any questions as we have our other advisor, Brittany, and our administrative support assistant, Diana, answering them as we go through the program and the presentation. We'll also ensure to leave some time at the end to address any questions that you may have. Uh, before we begin the presentation, we do have a special guest. Joining us today is the Dean of the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. Welcome, Dean Rose. Oh, thank you, Claire. I appreciate it. And I really appreciate the, the word the in front of Jack H. Brown because uh, the word the is a really an interesting word and it really does denote something special if you ever looked it up in the dictionary and i i'd recommend that you do so anyway i am larry rose I, and i am the dean of the jack h brown college of business and public administration a college that i'm really really proud of so if i seem a little over the top today it's probably because i am over the top about my college here so the uh the the Jack Brown name is something we're really also proud to be associated with. And I don't know if everybody knows, but Jack, uh, who's, who's unfortunately passed away, was the president chief executive of Stater Brothers for many years. And his values and what he believed in and supported the community uh, is something that our college really believes in as well. And so we're proud and, and, and we're proud to be associated with that name as a result. So the vision of the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration is to have a, a college where we have entrepreneurial spirit led by our centers and programs of excellence to define the future by actually providing more than a degree. And what I mean by that is that you can have a great great experience in the classroom because we have really good faculty. I mean, trained worldwide, uh, experienced uh, and really engaged in the community and their research. But we also have opportunities that, to learn outside the classroom that I hope you'll all hear about and also take advantage of. We have experiential learning opportunities where you can work uh, and have real life projects in the classroom. We have internship opportunities. We have clubs and events that you can get engaged in. So there's lots and lots of things going on. So you, I really highly encourage you to get really engaged and really make a difference in your education, especially develop those leadership skills that are be so important as you uh, progress throughout your career. So I, I think really 
the bottom line is that we're going to provide you lots of support. You're going to get support by our Student Success Center, and you're meeting a lot of our uh, staff that are involved in that. You're going to get support from and opportunities to get support from our centers and departments, and you'll uh, learn a little bit and hear from some of our center directors and what they have to offer you. And you'll have a lot of staff in our college and the departments and outside the departments and faculty. Uh, it's amazing, again, what you can get and the support you'll get from your faculty. Uh, and, and take advantage of that because it'll make a difference in your education. So with that, uh, I think uh, we, we do have a lot of external uh, awards and recognitions for what we do. We're well recognized in the Inland Empire now as one of the best colleges. We keep getting rated every year as the best college in the Inland Empire. So I'm really kind of proud about that too. And we also are accredited and that makes us stand out a little bit. Both our public administration uh, uh, degree and, and, and programs are accredited by NASPA, but also our we have AACSB accreditation. Only about 5% of the universities around the world have this. We're one of them. And it guarantees that we, we want to continue to try the best we can to provide you a high quality education. We're striving to continually improve what we do. So those accreditations, the uh, recognitions, the effort, the quality of the programs, all combine to give you a really unique Jack H. Brown College experience. Uh, I hope you enjoy the next uh, few minutes and uh, probably hour or so with uh, everybody in the college. And with that, I'll turn it back over. Perfect. Thanks, Dean Rose. So just like Dean Rose mentioned, the College of Business and Public Administration has many resources located in the college to help ensure our students are successful. The Student Success Center is just one of these resources and is truly a one-stop shop. The Student Success Center offers academic advising, internship assistance, and workshops. We are here to assist a student during their time at Cal State San Bernardino, but also to help them prepare for their next steps after graduation. Our college advisors are available to help students create individualized educational plans based on a student's major, their needs, strengths, and areas of growth. These educational plans create a path for a student to use as a guide and to stay on track for graduation. Advisors also assist students with understanding campus policies and procedures and help them navigate university life. We also assist with the internship process. Internships are a great way for a student to gain hands-on experience within their future career field before they graduate. These internship opportunities help a student build their resume and to start networking with professionals in their industry. Students can even earn course credit for an internship. Some of these internships can lead to employment after graduation, which is the goal. Thanks to our internship coordinator, Jessica Chavez, students can review and apply to internship opportunities that have already been established with the college and businesses and companies in the San Bernardino and surrounding area. We also offer resume review, college to career workshops, as well as networking events to prepare students to enter the workforce after graduation. Our services align with the vision of the college by providing more than a classroom experience and more than a degree. Since we can't be on campus to give this presentation to you, we wanted to take you all on a virtual tour of the college. As Dean mentioned, the college was named Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration after Jack H. Brown, the former CEO of Stater Brothers Market. The college opened on September 23rd, 1991. Um, and Jack H. Brown was very passionate about investing in future business leaders and was an avid supporter of Cal State San Bernardino. The college is surrounded by beautiful landscaping, trees, grassy areas, and it is the closest college to the dining hall, which is important to some students, especially after a long day on campus and studying. 
As you enter the building on the first floor, you'll find the Student Success Center and many of the classrooms within the building, including our big lecture hall, JB 102, which randomly has a piano in it. Not too sure why, but if you ever wanted to play and the classroom is open, go ahead. Um, here we can see the Student Success Center. Our center does look a little different today, but nonetheless, you'll be greeted by our amazing staff members that will assist you with your questions and concerns. Again, the Student Success Center is where students can receive academic advising, resume assistance, and internship information. However, we always have students just pop in to say hi, or if they have a quick question, we can always redirect them. As Claire mentioned, we have many resources within the college, and one of the resources that we have is our School of Entrepreneurship. This is actually a new program that launched in fall of 2020. There has been a growth in the entrepreneurship concentration and really a need for such a program within the area. The School of Entrepreneurship at CSUSB is the first in the state of California, and it is directed by Dr. Mike Stoll, who you'll hear from a little bit later in the presentation, giving more information on the program itself. The School of Entrepreneurship has designated classroom spaces, as well as other resources, such as the Inland Empire Center for Entrepreneurship, which provides supports for students, as well as community members who are interested in starting a business, as well as small business owners who are looking to expand an existing business. The school also offers great opportunities for students, such as the Garner Holt Fast Pitch Competition, where students can pitch their business ideas for the chance to win a cash prize. Again, we'll hear more information about this program a little bit later on in the presentation. We'll now move on to our Cybersecurity Center and Lab. Cybersecurity is also a growing concentration and career field. The Cybersecurity Center strives to promote the program as well as its students at different events, as well as to different companies, and continue to build the program. The Cybersecurity Center also oversees scholarship opportunities for cybersecurity students, such as the Scholarship for Service, which you can find more information about. Um, that information has been provided in the chat. If you're interested in that scholarship opportunity, I encourage you to visit that link. Cybersecurity Center also oversees our two student organizations, the Cyber and Intelligence Systems is a new name for us organization, as well as our women in cybersecurity organization. These two student organizations provide project and hands on experience for students outside of the classroom, and they have a designated meeting space on our first floor, which is across from our open computer lab. Again, those are just some. Uh, Kimberly, of the, uh, yes. what, one uh, question, a couple of, I've just kind of, oh, there we go. Cybersecurity Center can be reached. So if people wanted to know how we were a little different, how to contact uh, Tony Colson directly. So yes, I, um, I just, uh, yeah. information will be provided in the chat. And later on in the presentation, there will also be a video from Dr. Colson to review the cybersecurity program. So you'll get more in-depth information regarding the opportunities available. The scholarship for service program is something that is offered at many schools, but what makes us different is the resources that we have, as well as the student organizations and the hands-on experience that our students are able to get, in addition to the information that they're learning within their classroom. In addition to those resources within our Jack Brown Hall building, we have our Coyote Market where students can grab a quick snack or something to drink in between classes. As I mentioned, we have the computer lab where students have access to computers as well as printers that they can use to work on assignments or print um, those papers before classes begin. On the second floor is where Dean Rose's office is located and Dean Rose does like for students to stop by and say hello. So when we open again, um, I encourage you to do so. Across from the Dean's office is our study area for students and we also have collaborative rooms. These are designated spaces that students can reserve to work on group projects. One of 
the newer resources that we have within the college is our speaking center and it's already proven to be a great resource for our students. Within business, as well as in within your classes, having communication skills, both verbally and written are going to be important. And so the speaking center is something that has opened recently and it provides assistance for students that are preparing for a presentation or a speech. And it really strives to help students improve their public speaking skills. They can assist with any stage of that process from creating an outline for a presentation, all the way to the delivery. During appointments, students can practice their speaking skills and receive feedback. The center also helps address any anxiety and provides coping strategies surrounding public Cybersecurity, as we mentioned earlier, is also located on the second floor with our Inland Empire Center for Entrepreneurship. And last but not least on the second floor is our MBA office. If you're interested in pursuing a master's in business administration after you earn your bachelor's degree, I encourage you to visit the MBA office when we are on campus, or you can contact them while we are operating virtually. They can provide more information regarding the program as well as admission requirements. On the fourth floor, we have our department offices. The department offices oversee our concentrations as well as the courses within the majors. We also have another great resource, which is the JHBC Professional Writing Office. The Professional Writing Office helps students with any stage of a writing assignment, but it does strive to help students improve their business writing skills. The college has its own writing center, which is it's the only college on campus that does have its own writing center. There is one for the general campus, but the dean really wanted to make sure that students had that extra support. And so he did start the professional writing office for our students. Last but not least, the Center for Global Management helps to promote global awareness and provide opportunities for students as well as it oversees the faculty-led study abroad trips that are within the Jack H. Brown College. Perfect. So as you can see, a lot of great resources and centers to really help out our students and again, ensure they are successful. Um, here at or within the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration, we offer two degrees. We have the Bachelor of Arts in Administration and the Bachelor of Science in Information Systems and Technology. Under the Bachelor of Arts in Administration, there are 16 different concentrations that a student can choose. These concentrations are also referred to as focus areas, which are traditionally related to a career a student is interested in. And under the Bachelor of Science, Science and information systems and technology, there are three concentrations. Both degrees offers flexibility in the sense that if a student knows they want to pursue administration or information systems and technology, but is undecided on the concentration that they're looking to pursue, the lower division major core classes that they will complete during their freshman and sophomore year will work for any concentration. The major core classes not only build a solid foundation during a student's freshman and sophomore year, but they also allow a student to explore the different careers and options under business administration or information systems and technology. As Kim mentioned, every concentration falls under a specific department within the college. And within these departments, there is a department chair in charge of the curriculum and course scheduling. Within each department, there are also faculty advisors that meet with our students for career exploration. And due to our AACSB accreditation, our faculty members not only have the educational requirements to be teaching these courses, but they also have firsthand experience and knowledge as they have worked in these industries. We'll now have some brief videos uh, for program highlights. The first one is going to be from Dr. Tony Colson. Dr. Tony Colson is a faculty member within the cybersecurity program, but he's also the director of the Cybersecurity Center, which again is a nationally recognized center for academic excellence. Go ahead and start that video. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nothing makes me prouder than when a student comes up to me and says, Tony, I got my first job offer. But these days, it's become more challenging because it's not just, I got one job offer, it's Tony, I have three, I have four, what do I do? These are students from a regional university that are competing against students from national universities, the names that we all know. And we are able to show that our kids are that good. At Cal State San Bernardino, a lot of students attend here because of economics. And I attended here because of economics. I was putting myself through school. And it quickly became apparent that these are my people, right? These are the people I was like these kids. That was part of what motivated me to stay here, was just experiencing the students, experiencing their curiosity, saying, you know what, they're a lot like I was when I was that age. And what can we do that's exciting and different? And as a result, we've created incredible programs. We've capitalized on the demographic that goes here. And we created from nothing a world-class cybersecurity program. And we're finding our students can perform at extremely high levels. Here, Cal State San Bernardino was funded to be a cybersecurity national resource center to help lead 238 colleges and universities nationwide. But what it really means to be a Cybersecurity National Resource Center and to also be a center of academic excellence in cyber defense is it means opportunity for students. It means that the faculty, the university has shown and has a track record of having the resources and the programs together to be incredible. And our students are able to take what we have and turn it into something that is beyond my wildest imagination. Cybersecurity is a national concern. My passion in it is I wanted to create a world-class program, make a difference, but also make the world a safer place. And now a message from Dr. Stoll from the School of Entrepreneurship. California State University San Bernardino has created the first ever School of Entrepreneurship in the state of California, which it will launch this August at the start of the university's fall 2020 semester. Housed in the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration, the School of Entrepreneurship places the university as a leading entity in the growing field of entrepreneurship education, boosting Cal State San Bernardino's already highly successful, globally recognized entrepreneurship program. The School of Entrepreneurship will significantly raise the university's profile in recruiting prospective students, in attracting highly qualified instructors, and further enhancing its relationships in the inland region with potential employers, donors, and other organizations, which in turn increases support for startup ventures, job and internship opportunities for students, and in attracting more local professionals and entrepreneurs to support the school as mentors, guest lecturers, and adjunct faculty. The School of Entrepreneurship will be a key component in showing how Cal State San Bernardino is evolving and innovating to meet the needs of students and the community. I'm Mike Stoll, Director of the Cal State San Bernardino School of Entrepreneurship, where we define the future. We will have a video regarding our hospitality management concentration. This is also a newer program within the Jack H. Brown College and is offered at the Palm Desert campus. Hospitality, a booming $7.5 billion industry in the Coachella Valley, an industry that the Cal State San Bernardino Palm Desert campus is prepared to serve. With its new hospitality management program, 
the CSUSB Palm Desert Campus is contributing to the vibrant enterprises that make up an area long recognized as a world-renowned resort destination. Through the AACSB-accredited Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration, the program brings experienced educators to mold the next generation of hospitality leaders. Students are given the tools to become dynamic professionals in management, experts in customer relations, and active frontrunners in a flourishing industry. As tourism and related businesses continue to grow, the CSUSB Palm Desert Campus is ready to grow with it, helping to define the future of the hospitality industry throughout the Coachella Valley. So we do have some pretty amazing programs and centers within the college. Uh, for this next portion of the presentation, we do have a student panel put together so you can ask questions, um, but also we have some prepared questions for our, our guest. So today we have Sarah Cervantes, who is a student ambassador for the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. Sarah is currently under the Administration Bachelor of Arts with an international business concentration. Uh, we also have Diana Ambrose, who is the Student Success Center's Administrative Support Assistant. Diana is also a CSUSB alum and graduated from the College of Business and Public Administration in 2017 with a Bachelor of Arts in Administration, the Human Resource Management Concentration. So welcome, ladies. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so like I said, we do have some prepared questions, but we also invite our guests to ask any questions that they might have for Diana and Sarah. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat and we'll be addressing them or feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask the question live. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Maybe you, Sarah. How did you choose a major within the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration? Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, like um, Claire mentioned, thank you for introducing me. Um, I chose my major one my senior year in high school because I had, or I have an interest in someday working abroad. For me, it was between two choices, either foreign languages or international business. So I chose international business and I'm happy that I did. I know that there are a lot more career choices and opportunities. And I really have enjoyed being part of this college and it further confirms to me that I made the right choice. Sounds good, thank you, Sarah. And then Diana, how did you choose a major or program within the College of Business? Okay, so I'm a bit different from Sarah. I actually switched uh, my majors during my sophomore year of college. I was originally pursuing pre-nursing. To be completely honest, the only reason why I had applied uh, for pre-nursing was because all my friends were doing it. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do originally, uh, but during my freshman year, um, I started to get more interested in the business aspect of obviously in career, um, specifically in human resources management type of area, and specifically because um, I was also working at that time. So my interest just started to develop more into business. So I decided to actually meet with an advisor at the time of, uh, with the College of Business and Public Administration. And she really helped me, guide me through the steps of changing my majors and basically pinpointing which degree I kind of wanted to go for. Um, and I am forever thankful for her because I did make the right choice. Um, I wanted to go with human resources management. After that, the end of the appointment, I ended up just submitting my change of major form that same day. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. And yeah, we do get a lot of students who are maybe undecided of their major that they want to go into, um, but they have maybe a career in mind. So we can help guide you as to maybe what major would be a good fit for, for you. Um, but oftentimes students do come to our center if they're not a part of the College of Business and Public Administration. And we sit down with them to explain what our program looks like, what those courses look like, to again, help them identify maybe a program that is interesting to them. So we do also meet with the undeclared students or students who are still trying to figure out what that major would actually be. So we're happy to help you if you are again, maybe in another college. 
Um, we'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with you, Diana, this time. Um, what was, uh, since you are an alum, what was your favorite part about being a student with the College of Business? I think Diana might be frozen unless it's just on my end. So maybe we'll go ahead and go to, to Sarah. Sarah, what has been your favorite part about uh, being a student with the College of Business? I think my favorite part of being part um, of being part of the College of Business is definitely the connection that uh, the connections that I've made with my classmates and the faculty. So um, I've made a lot of friends. I don't know what happened, but I'm going to keep on going. Um, I've made a lot of friends by just going to class and I feel like I've made a lot of connections that are going to last a lifetime. And honestly, the support system that our college has um, is amazing, like Dean Rose mentioned. And I think that really has made the difference in my um, college career um, here as a student, as a business student. Okay, thank you. Um, if you have maybe a question or concern in one of your classes, how accessible are the faculty members and how do you maybe go about contacting them or reaching out to them? Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> so for the faculty members, um, being a student there, I would strongly encourage, and I, this is what I did too during my time there, is um, professors offer office hours. And it's very convenient to actually um, go during those office hours. Sometimes, um, even if those times don't work for you, I would always email the professor and see if there's another time that we can meet aside of those office hours, because as I mentioned, I was working and going to school back then. So it was hard to kind of have the same availability as a professor. Um, additionally, too, I would reach out via email, sending a quick email if I had a question that I may not have asked during class time, if I needed further assistance um, or any concerns in regarding to a project. Um, also, staying after class, there'll be times where I'll be like, OK, can you just review this really quick and faculty members are more than um, happy to assist. Um, they're always there as long as you just reach out, make sure you reach out. I would say the same thing as Diana. I think it's really important to take advantage of the office hours that the professors have. And for me, um, sometimes I opt more for email and I know um, I always feel confident that I'll get a rapid reply because like Diana mentioned, the professors here, the faculty are really here to help the students and they're always ready to, um, you know, do more. Um, I also, you know, I have two jobs and I can't always um, be present in the office hours or right after class. So it's been really helpful for me to um, contact my um, professors and they always make time. So um, I think we have a really amazing staff. Okay, thank you both. Um, if a student was looking to get involved with their concentration or within the college, are there any clubs and organizations that a student can join? And if so, how do they maybe join one of those um, organizations or clubs? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of clubs and organizations that we have for our business students. Um, we, I'm just gonna name some that we have. We have the Accounting Association and the Beta Alpha Psi, the Upstarters Entrepreneurship Club, um, Society for Human Resources, the Marketing Association. And these are just some of the clubs. We do have more. And you could always find this information in our JHBC um, page. Um, we have it under the Student Success. We have all the information there uh, that you would need to join. These are all clubs that are very, um, that are very active right now. Um, and I think that Diana can give a little bit more insight than I can on how to join the clubs. 
Yeah, so definitely. Thank you, Sarah. Um, with the whole COVID situation, a lot of our clubs are using social media to, um, you know, take a, send out information. Um, you are able, it doesn't matter what type of concentration you're pursuing, you're okay to participate in any other clubs within the college. Um, the, the clubs are more than welcome to have any type of, um, any type of student members that are interested in joining. The best way to um, join a club is just reaching out to them via email. They do provide um, information on when their upcoming meetings are. There's times that certain, um, I believe certain clubs do require you to sign up for their uh, membership. And it's just signing a little form that you, a documentation that you have to sign. But that's still first thing is to just always um, email them. Or if when we eventually do go back on campus and they're promoting one of their coming meeting in persons, um, then, they'll, then you'll get further information um, towards that end. But, and then just wanted to include too, I know Brittany did provide the link on the chat as well. So you can check out all the other clubs and organizations um, within the College of Business and Public Administration. Perfect, thank you ladies. And thank you Brittany for including that in the chat. Um, the next question, does the college host any special events for students? I know since we are in this online virtual environment, it is a little bit different than when we are on campus, but what are some events that the college usually has um, maybe in this virtual environment or when we do return to um, on campus? So we do host um, some small workshops as well that are beneficial for students to attend. We do have like resume, resume writing workshops, um, internship information in regarding to, to the JHBC internship program. And then we do also host um, like a LinkedIn, how to set up a LinkedIn. Um, additionally, one of our biggest events that JHBC does host is the Business Madness event. It is held annually and it's held um, basically towards the end of the almost the, of the year. It's more of a career and internship networking event. It's there for, um, we encourage uh, especially uh, graduating seniors to attend. It's a great way to meet and network with uh, professionals in any type of industry. We get um, employers that come from Target, the city of San Bernardino, the county of San Bernardino. We have um, UPS and there's so many more that I can continue listing. Um, and then on this event, it's really good to um, basically a good way to either walk out of there with a potential internship opportunity or a job opportunity. We do require students to attend um, in business attire and to bring your resumes. That's a really great opportunity that students do wait for at the end of the school year. I think Diana hit all of the major events that we have. Um, since we did convert to doing everything through Zoom and online, uh, I do have some events on Mondays. I also do um, interviews on resources, organizations, and clubs. So if you have more questions about that, I, you can check out the Instagram page. Um, there's a lot of information on, like I said, resources on campus. And yeah, our college hosts a lot of events um, specifically for our student success. Yeah, thank you, ladies. And I know those workshops are really important for our juniors and our seniors, but they're great for first time freshmen and our sophomores as well to really help them prepare that resume, work on those interview skills. So if they do come across an internship, they're ready to go. And as Diana mentioned, we do have the Business Madness event that traditionally happens in March, where we have different employers come out who are looking for student interns or possibly to hire students out after graduation. So oftentimes we have students land internships um, or po potentially employment. Um, so they're all set for, for when they graduate. So thank you ladies for providing that information. Um, last question that we have prepared, what advice would you give students who are considering joining either Cal State San Bernardino or the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration? 
Okay, so mine would be more of a general advice and just um, in regards to students who are looking to obviously attend college. My biggest advice is enjoy your time being in school. Like that's one of the biggest things you should take advantage of. If I could go back, I'd enjoy it a lot more. I was obviously, like I mentioned before, I was working and going to school. I, to be completely honest, I wasn't knowing how to balance both. So it was a bit hard and I would encourage students to participate in clubs and organizations and make time to attend resources there are only a few that I attended um, for workshops that I wish I could have attended all. Um, I honestly, if I could go back, I would have joined every club I can <laughs> um, just because it's a good way to network. And um, like I said, if I were to go back to school again, I would definitely take advantage of you know, all the resources available for um, workshops, including um, what was it, the, any um, clubs specifically to join. So I'd encourage you to check those out. I know we touched a bit on um, clubs earlier before. Um, and just keep in mind that yes, the College of Business does have um, just uh, clubs for within the college, but we do also have other clubs and organizations throughout the CSUSB. Um, and you could check those out through the Office of Student Engagement website. And then they list a, they have a whole list of other organizations. So you don't necessarily have to stick with just business clubs. There are more out there. I definitely agree with Diana. You know, I would say getting involved is probably something that has made all the difference for me. And I've made so many friends and so many connections. And I know that my future self is gonna appreciate it and be thankful for. Um, but the main thing that I wanna say is take advantage um, of the resources. We have so many clubs, we have so many organizations and faculty, and they're here for the sole purpose of aiding your college success. So. Um, you know, take the initiative for yourself and your future college success. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Um, we now want to open it up to the, the guests. So if you do have any questions or concerns, then please feel free to raise your hand by using that. I think you could use the little reaction um, and we'll just go ahead and call on you. But again, if you have questions, please feel free to include them in the chat. Do we have any questions coming through the chat right now that we can maybe ask Diana and Sarah? There is a few that I just noticed. There's one that says, what is the difference between marketing and entrepreneurship concentration? So I don't know if one of you guys want to go over that. I can, yeah. I, I did answer that one in, in a private message, but I'll answer that one for, for everyone. So marketing is going to focus on the promotion of a product or a service, and you're going to have courses focused on consumer behavior, marketing research and strategies, um, as well as the professional sales and, and sales management. Uh, but then beyond that, each of our concentrations has a set of required courses, but then you also have electives within the concentration where you get to explore a little bit more on, on what you want to learn in that specific area. Um, entrepreneurship is designed for students who want to begin a business or um, those that have an existing business, but maybe you want to expand that into a larger business. And so that is going to focus on innovative and creative thinking, um, as well as leadership skills. I think if there's another question about clubs. So as mentioned before, um, we do have student organizations for almost all of our concentrations that we have in the college. Um, so we have American Marketing Associations or one of the few schools within the area that has a student chapter. There is the um, Women in Cybersecurity, as I mentioned before, and then we have the uh, Cyber and Intelligence Security Organization. There's Financial Management Association, as Sarah mentioned, the Accounting Association and Beta Alpha Psi, the Upstarters for Entrepreneurship, um, and Society for Human Resources Management, which I think is the one that Diana wished that she could have joined when she was a student. And all of these clubs are active, but they not only do they meet regularly, but they also participate in conferences and competitions throughout the year. 
Perfect. And what's great about our degrees, again, students under the administration degree will be completing a certain set of major core classes during their freshman and sophomore year that, again, will really help gain some knowledge as to what different avenues or career paths a student could potentially go down with that business administration degree and deciding which one is right for, for them. And same with information system technology. Those lower division major core classes, you'll be completing year one and year two really going to help you build that foundation, but always um, will allow you to explore the different areas. Uh, within each degree, you have your own introduction courses. So one introduction class to administration and then an introduction class to information system technology. And again, those courses can really help you explore different options. And what's nice is the concentration courses. Those courses will begin your junior year um, or uh, once you hit junior standing, those is when you can start taking those courses. So again, during your first year, freshman year, your sophomore year, you can explore with the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration, one of our advisors, our faculty members, or maybe even reaching out to their career center as well. Uh, the career center on the university, we do have a lot of great resources to, again, help students navigate what major and what program is right for them. I know there was another question. Um, it says, what? Well, oh, no, wait, I lost it. Hold on. If, oh, yeah, is as prospective students, would we be permitted to observe club meetings? Um, I would say, and quote me if I'm wrong, you ladies, um, reaching out to the clubs to see if they'll be willing to share that Zoom link with you guys um, and see if. You guys can, depending what the upcoming meetings are, just reaching out by visiting that website that um, that Brittany has provided the link to and just grabbing their contact information through there. I would say, Diana, probably wouldn't be able to, to sit on a meeting just yet, but what I would encourage students to do is to follow them on Instagram and then communicate with them that way. Um, if, if Brittany or Diana, if you could put our Student Success Center Instagram handle in the chat. We are um, linked with all of these student organizations and campus resources at CSUSB. So if you have seen one that you're interested in, I would encourage you to reach out to them through Instagram and then maybe at that point they'd be willing to share. But it's also a great way for you to see what's going on at the university and keep up to date with, with important information. And it looks like Shanira, you have a question. If you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, we'll be happy to assist. Hello, um, I'm a transfer student. And um, I was wondering if you want to do two concentrations, do you have to finish one first before you could do the other? Like I'm coming in as management, but I'm also interested in international business and I can't decide which one. Which one? So, <laughs> Okay. I just want well, to know. Like Claire said, that's the great thing about the majors. You start in those core courses, and then while you're taking those, you can kind of figure out what aspect of business you are leaning more towards. But as far as dual concentrations, we really would want to take a look at what your expected graduation date would be, what your goal is, and to see how long it would take to complete both. Um, but potentially, uh, we would have to take a look at that. Um, the international business concentration itself has different tracks within it. So there is one that's a functional track where you can focus on management, marketing, um, or uh, finance, accounting. So within that, you can focus a little bit more on those. Um, the other thing you could do is maybe pick one as a concentration and think about the other one as a minor. Oh, thank you. So would I have to do that prior to starting? No, you, you can do that once you start. Like I said, you might change your mind once you begin, yes. once you start taking those courses. Okay. But um, probably within the first year as a transfer student, because you're already mm -hmm. at junior standing is when you would want to make that decision. So probably yes. before the end of that first year is when you'd want to meet with an advisor each term as okay. well. But, you know, it's something we can explore within an advising appointment. Take a look. Thank you. You're welcome. All right.
And we do have another question. I'm not sure if I'm not looking at the responses of Brittany and just going through the list, but it does say when can transfer students start applying for scholarships? That is a good question, Diana. So the CSUSB campus does have one application for all scholarship opportunities, and that does open up, um, and ladies, this is where I'll need your assistance as far as the time of year that typically, I believe it's in the early fall when that typically opens up um, for the academic year. So you wanna make sure you do catch that application filing period. Um, but all it is is one application and then that is for all opportunities. Yeah, and we do have the financial aid and scholarship office that usually sends that information to students. So just make sure you're checking your Coyote email once you gain access to it for all of those updates regarding the application periods to ensure you, you apply on time. And if you do have any other questions regarding financial aid or the scholarship office, definitely reach out to one of their representatives um, and kind of get that information from, from them. Yeah. Great question. So Claire, I do see another question from Natalie. I don't know if this is addressed yet. It says, if I decided to make my concentration in marketing, can I still start a business in the future with that concentration? Absolutely. Um, the entrepreneurship concentration is for those that are, are thinking of starting a business, but that doesn't mean that you can't start a business eventually down the road. And remember, we do have the Inland Empire Center for Entrepreneurship, and that is a service that's available for all students. You don't even have to be a student within the College of Business to take advantage of that resource. Um, it's also available for members of the community. So if you're a marketing concentration, which again, marketing goes hand in hand with the promotion and there's a lot of marketing students who do wanna start their own business, whether it's selling clothing or, or whatever it may be, um, some already have their own business and are looking to expand. So you don't necessarily have to concentrate in entrepreneurship if, if you wanna stick with marketing, but I would encourage you to take advantage of the resources available in the college because they can really help with starting that business plan. Um, the center also has the lunch with entrepreneurs. Um, hopefully we're able to resume that when we're back on campus, but that's where you can sit with um, business owners from the community and learn from them how they started their business and what they would recommend and, and resources that are available. So absolutely. There was another question. Um, I know you had gone over it, but I think it's worth addressing again, uh, what the difference between the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelors of Science degree programs are. I can go over. Uh, the difference between the two is really, when it comes down to it, is the number of units that you're taking. So a Bachelor of Science is going to require more units than a Bachelor of Arts, but they both are a bachelor's degree. So the administration degree is a bachelor of arts and the information systems and technology degree is a bachelor of science because those are a few more requirements within that degree program. And another student asked, when is the first day to register for classes for fall for new students? Traditionally, our new students do need to first go through orientation. Um, before they do that, they will have a registration hold on their account that would be preventing them from registering. So I would say look out for that email from the orientation office to schedule your orientation appointment. And traditionally, after that is when students can register. During orientation, you also have an opportunity to meet with the College of Business and Public Administration. Again, we'll go over program requirements, more specifically what courses to look uh, out for for your first term here at Cal State San Bernardino, provide some course options, um, and again, really go over the program requirements. So definitely keep an eye out for that email to schedule your registration date. And if you do have any questions, then definitely reach out to orientation first year office. 
And I see we have Alejandro Rubio raising his hand. Yeah. Yes, hello. Uh, so I can ask a question now? Yes, of course. Okay, great. So I'd be an incoming freshman and I was wondering, I was offered admission to the Administration Real Estate Concentration Program and I was wondering exactly what it is I'd be getting myself into by accepting that. So Alejandro, are you interested in becoming an agent or a broker? Yes. Yeah, so right now I was also wondering if it interferes with my agent courses because I'm currently working on those right now to become an agent by when I'm 18. And I didn't know if that would interfere with the classes. Okay. And in the end, it would be a broker. Okay. So one thing I encourage you to do is take a look at what's required to sit for the exam. Um, in order to be an agent, uh, there are different requirements. So there are courses that you have to take, but um, some require either a, a bachelor's or maybe even the minor within real estate. So just, I would say, take a look at that now. If the courses that you're taking are enough already to meet that requirement, then another great concentration that can go along with real estate is, is marketing because being able to promote is a big part, right, of selling within real estate. So that sometimes we have students who are in real estate already, but they look at marketing to help them with those um, skills and as far as promoting. But I would encourage you to look at that, that exam to see exactly what's required. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. There was a question about uh, whether the college help students find internships? Oh, Claire, you're muted. <laughs> okay, uh, now can you hear me? <laughs> so within the College of Business and Public Administration, we do have our very own internship coordinator, Jessica Chavez, who helps establish different internships with companies and businesses within the San Bernardino and surrounding areas. So she really goes out and ensures that the internship is going to be a quality internship that you're gaining hands-on experience that is actually, um, you know, going to help you for your future career goals. With the internship, we usually have a list of internships that are currently available for our students listed on our website. So students who are actively in the college or within a program um, within the College of Business and Public Administration can utilize that list and apply for, for internships. If you wanted to maybe go over resume review or internship skills or interview skills, um, again, we can assist with that as well. So kind of preparing your resume for when you do turn in that application for the internship. And then with the workshops that we offer, how to maybe brush up on those interview skills. We also have a workshop on LinkedIn so that professional networking profile or social media profile um, to start networking with professionals in, in your industry. So yes, we do help with the internship process. We don't place students specifically into an internship. It is up to the students to apply and go through the interview process and hiring process with the company. But again, we have internships that have been established already. Um, and you know that they're a great quality um, and that you're again, really gaining that hands-on experience that will help you for your future career. Yeah. And just to add on to that, um, a lot of our concentrations have the internship course as an option within the elective area. So if you find a, an internship within your concentration area, then you can potentially enroll for credit and have it count as one of the elective courses for the concentration. So it's a great way to meet a concentration requirement as well as get that experience that Claire mentioned, something to build your resume before you graduate. As the Dean mentioned, we in the college, we do like to make sure that you're getting more than a degree. What you learn outside of the classroom, those skills are just as important as what you learn inside the classroom. And that's why we have all of these resources available. Awesome, so I will interrupt here. Um, if there are no other questions, um, 
I just wanted to thank everyone for that presentation and thank you to all my colleagues in the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. Um, any final questions, if you can put them in the chat and I will send them to my colleagues there. Um, but thank you all for being here today and good job um, to everyone who presented today. Um, and hopefully we'll see you at some future sessions for Coyotes Connect. And if not at orientation um, later this summer. So thank you everyone and have a good evening.